Adventures with Watercraft. This is a watercraft pick March 21st, 2017. This is a spring stream near Sedona, Arizona. One of the several in the Verde Valley that are beautiful, have um, interesting fish, very delicate environments. I don't want to say exactly where this one is. People certainly know, but it's being changed already so much from beaver activity in the area. And um, it contains beautiful patches of watercraft. There is also a mint, Minta citrata, which is, this is supposedly the only area it grows in the whole Verde Valley. All the watercrafts and mint are non-native. I don't know if they're considered an invasive. They are European introduction and have localized and done really well. This is my field cleaning method. There is the possibility of parasites in the watercraft, mainly only growing under the water and only growing in areas where there's manure, um, deer, horses, cattle, and it's only happened two times in America as far as I can find the research. There are loads of crawfish in this stream and Arizona Fishing Game is trying to get people to catch and eat them. They are an invasive and they are competing with a lot of the more delicate native plants and animals. This area was homesteaded. There's some remains there which also make kind of a nice year-round little hike. Common blackhawks are in the area. Mexican eagles they're also called. This one's kind of claimed this area and kind of squawking at me and didn't mean to bother him too much or her, but I had to get some shots. Pretty nice right here. The watercress season seems to have two times of the year where it's really good to pick. Right now, at this time, late winter, early spring. And then again, oddly enough, like September. My theory is the light coming through in late winter, early spring, there's no leaves on the trees gives it a, a good t growth period and then again as the sun starts lowering on the horizon late summer it comes up again. Here is some of the beaver activity in the area. Um, one of the good things that is brought oyster mushroom and some really healthy ones. Also at a time where there are morels in the season but there's not a lot of mushrooms in central Arizona in late winter spring but sometimes. But the coprinus, the deer beds possibly some interesting kind of white polypore. There also is lots of turkey tail in the area, but I didn't see any that day. This is another spring stream, a little higher up. Kind of a popular local swimming hole that also has really good patches of watercress. And occasionally a morel or two. And lately it's so many times of the year when it needs to be wet for morels, it's just been dry in Arizona. So here's some of my big patches in this zone. I don't really see anyone else ever picking watercress much in the area. One way I like to protect the plant is kind of chop at it like this, or not pulling in the roots. So it may seem like I'm being a little messy and leaving some behind, but what I'm doing is trying to cut it and get some really nice leaves and not yank on the root system at all. It's also best to have something with a hard case to store it in. You don't want to mash it up too much. So this backpack has like a hard shell inside. Watercress is possibly the most nutritious food for weight on planet Earth. More vitamin C than orange, more calcium than milk, more iron than spinach. It's anti-cancer, super antioxidants loves more vitamins and minerals it's truly a super super duper food and i love the flavor of it it can be pretty hot pretty spicy for some people some people say it tastes dirty but i think that's probably farm raised and not the wild i definitely am a fortunate i'm fortunate to live in places where I have patches that come in spring water. Brought some into the kitchen and I'm gonna make some quinoa tabbouleh with it. So I'm using the watercraft. I love using wild foods, but I really want to also make them taste good. And everything doesn't have to just taste weedy. And one way I like to do that is adding these wild ingredients to other things. 
and make it palatable so that everyone can enjoy, not people just with a green tongue. Definitely want to wash off well. And then what I do, just to ensure there is no parasites, is soak it in vinegar. Just put a little vinegar in there. Maybe it also goes with whatever dish you're cooking. Really get it all covered. So if there just happens to be any parasites in it, that vinegar and the acid is going to kill it. It's better safe than sorry. Sometimes with wild foods, people that aren't experienced, they kind of get something in their head. Just knowing that something could possibly make you sick seems to affect their stomach. So here I'm making quinoa typically, keeping it gluten free and um, I like to bully that is really green. This is a little bit more grainy than I normally would make. There's some mint. There's a lot of different things you can add to bully, but you can get those healthy greens eating in a way that a lot of people can like to share. If you like the video, please press like and subscribe. On to the next adventure with a passion for it.